Well, since fall is such a good time for preparation of new flower beds and also for planting, I thought today we'd go through some of the tools that you might be using for these projects this fall. And to start with, we're going to start with our shovels and spades. And here we have just a regular garden shovel. And you'll notice it has a rounded head and usually they come to a point down here. Now this is a very good tool for digging holes like for transplanting trees. Also the head is concave so it also can scoop things out like if you're scooping soil out of the hole or you're transferring um, compost or soil around this is a very good tool for that. Also on the head you can notice that we've got a step here and this is a very good thing to get some area to put your foot here and get that weight on the top and the step can just help keep your foot from slipping off because if this is just a straight edge here it can be a smaller area to get your foot on here. Now we also have here a longer narrower shovel. This is a transplanting shovel and it actually is very good to use if you're transplanting plants that have long roots or you're in a flower bed where you don't want to disturb other plants roots around this this would be a good tool to have. Now you'll notice that again it is much longer and narrower it still has the rounded edge here we've got the step on the top and this is a just a good tool to get into a smaller space. Now if you're preparing your flower beds or something like that what you're going to want to use is a very handy tool this is a garden spade here and you'll notice it's a little different than our shovel because we're using it for a different purpose. What we've got is a rectangular head and it's almost straight here on the bottom where the other one is curved quite a bit. Now this makes a very good blade for slicing through sod or through hard soil and also you'll notice that it's flat so this also makes a good edge. You could use this to edge with and also if you're preparing a new bed and you need to get the turf off, you can slide this underneath the turf and use your leverage to get that out. Now with this tool I wanted to show you a very good thing is that the head and the neck here are all one piece of metal and tempered steel. This is a very nice garden spade that can help us a lot. Now a tool that is used a lot with our garden spade is our spading fork. And what we have here is again we have this tempered steel and the tines on here are actually square which make them very strong and usually you'll have four prongs and we have our one piece here and this is a very good tool for spading up our earth and it's it's very good if you have heavy compacted clay soils to get down in there and lift those soils out and get them spaded up. Now this is another spading fork and I'll show you the difference here. Whoops, <laughs> sorry about that. Between one that is well made all in one piece and one that is not quite so well made. Now if you're going to use your spading fork a lot it's worth it to pay the extra money because this is going to last a lot longer than this. However if you're not going to use it very often then maybe you can get by with something a little less better made. Now a potato fork is very similar to this but instead of having the square tines they're a little bit flatter and wider somewhat like this and that can be used to dig your root vegetables, root crops and potatoes just as your spading fork could because those won't injure your root crops as much as a spade or a shovel would. Now as we're talking about forks another type of fork are the pitchfork or manure forks that we have and these are not for soil preparation. Um, many times people will go in and grab something like this to try and work the earth up and this is not what this fork is for. These are actually round tines that are pointed so they can be inserted into a compost bin or into mulch and then picked up and you can transfer that mulch or turn the compost in your bin very easily. You can get this fork in there very well and turn it over. Now this is just a little bit bigger model. This is a manure fork or compost fork and we've just got more tines so we can get more compost in there. The other thing about these forks is that they are usually fairly well concave so you can carry a lot of compost or mulch in that without it sliding off of the fork. Now we also have a lot of hose at our disposal and here's just a regular garden hoe. 
with a flat head and these are used for uh, healing up areas. If we're weeding around plants, you can also turn it on edge and get a V-shaped drill where you would plant your seeds. Or if you need a large flat one, you could use it with the flat edge for your drill to plant seeds in the bottom. Now, a triangular hoe can be used in a little bit narrower spot than our flathead hoe because you can see here how we can get in around the plants without accidentally chopping them off better with our triangular hoe than we can with our flat hoe. Now here we have a cultivator that is very good for preparing a seed bed and also for light weeding on the top if we want to get our weeds out. Now a very good tool, again when you're creating a new garden bed and you need to get rid of some turf or you need to edge, is a half moon edger. And basically we have a nice edge here and we also have our step so that we can step on the top and we just insert this where we need to edge, step on it and rock it back and forth. And this makes a very nice cut and it's a very handy tool to have in the garden. It makes a very neat border. Now something else that we're going to be using a lot here pretty soon is our standard garden or lawn or leaf rake. And here we have our springtime leaf rake. And these are basically for raking up grass, also leaves. They're very lightweight and you've got a wide area that you can rake up any of those leaves with. However, these are not going to be used to move any soil around because they're not sturdy enough to do that. If we're needing to move soil around or to smooth it out, what we're going to need is our garden rake. And here we have two of them. We have a flathead rake here and then we have a bowhead rake. And they basically serve the same purposes. We have our times here. We can move soil around with them, small rocks if we need to remove those. Um, these serve that purpose very well. We can also use them to smooth over beds where we've broadcast seed. Now, usually, your flathead rake is a little bit sturdier than your bowhead rake. However, the advantage of the bowhead rake is that it tends to be lighter. Now, the lightness will depend on the handle. We're here, we have a hollow handle, so this rake is actually lighter where this is a solid handle. But if you had the same handles, your flathead rake would be heavier than your bowhead rake. Now these are just a few of the tools that can help make some of these projects a lot easier and right now we're going to go use some of them. Well, you'll recall a few weeks ago when we had the hose out here trying to come up with an outline for the area that we're going to turn into our butterfly garden. Well, we found an outline and Steve came in and sprayed our Bermuda grass and now the grass is dead. So it's time to move on with the next step of the process of creating a new garden bed. And basically we're going to be using some of those tools that we've just been talking about. We're going to use the half moon edger. We're also going to be using the garden spade and the spading fork in this process. Now I will tell you right away that in this first part of the process with turf removal, there is an easier way to do this. You can rent a sod cutter and cut the sod off the top. However, we're going to go through it the hard way. So if you don't have access to a sod cutter or you would really like a lot of good exercise, this is how you would do it. Now what we're gonna do is basically, we're gonna come along with our half moon edger and we're gonna cut an edge all along the outside of our ground bed. And you can see how you would use the edger. You just push it in here and kind of rock it back and forth and we're cutting through that sod on the top. Now even though our Bermuda grass is dead, we want to go ahead and remove that because that Bermuda turf is pretty thick and if we were to rototill it this or if we're digging it by hand, it's a little too thick to work into the garden well. So we're going to take that layer off the top, we'll put it in another area to compost and break down and then at a later date, after it's broken down, we can add that back wherever we need it in the garden. Now I'm coming along here and I'm basically making an edge. And then I'm going to come in about a foot and make an edge this way. And then come back along the back side. 
And essentially, what we're doing here is when we get finished, we're going to have the sod cut into about one foot square pieces. Now there's not really any magic rule about having them one foot square, except that that's a nice small area to handle and lift and be able to work with. So I'm going to come back in here and make my slices at about a foot. Now we would continue and do this on the whole piece here that we're doing. And that's why I tell you that if you have a sod cutter, this would not be quite as much work. It can be a little bit difficult to operate the sod cutter, but you'll probably get done with the project faster. Now, I've actually already got quite a few squares cut here, so I'll show you the next step. And what we're going to do now, and you can see we've already gotten started here, is to take our spade and we're basically going to undercut that turf. And this is, an, again, a little bit more difficult part of the process. Now, we don't want to get too much of that turf up. We're just taking the top layer of it. Well, now when we get our sod dug, we basically want to shake most of this soil off because this is very good soil. It's top soil. And we don't want to just put this in the compost. So we shake this off of our piece of sod here and also get any of these roots. Even though we're dead, we don't really want to leave them in there. And we shake this out and then put that over to put into our compost pile. And we'll continue this over the whole plot. Now, we actually are going to use a sod cutter. And what we're going to do is actually move to an area that's already been cleared to show you the next step in this process. Well, once you've got the sod removed, then it's time to go ahead and prepare that bed for any perennials or shrubs you might be putting in next spring. And we're kind of cheating here and using some ground that's already cleared, but the process is the same that will follow in the other bed. Now, I'll tell you again, if you want to do this quickly, you can get a rototiller and rototill that area up. However, if you don't have access to a rototiller or you just would like to dig it a bit deeper because you have really heavy clay soil, then get your garden spade and your garden fork out and get to work. Now, it's good to do this in a kind of a methodical method. And here we've got a trench that's about 12 inches wide and say about two feet long. And we would basically do this same process, repeating it, working backwards through the whole bed. And the reason we're working backwards is because that we don't want to step on what we've already tilled. Now here, I've already dug my trench and I've put my topsoil here on the side. And since we do have heavy clay soil, what I'm going to do is a process known as double digging. Now you can actually do this one of two ways. You can either take your garden spade here and dig this layer out, again as deep as your spade is, and pile it on the side and then we'll come back and we'll dig again. However, we're going to do this a little bit of a quicker process by using our spading fork here. And what we're going to do is take our spading fork down in the bottom of the trench and work that in and we're going to work that soil down there. And this is where a very good spading fork comes in handy because this soil can be quite, quite compacted. You can see here that we've got the nice heavy clay. Now you don't want to do this when your soil is too wet. And here, you can see we're pretty close to it here. What you want is for your soil to be able to crumble easily when you lift it up. And it is crumbling for us, but you can also see just how thick that is. Now, if you do have heavy clay soil and you're double digging, you can add some compost and work that in as you're digging with your spading fork and that will help that area down there. Now the reason that I took the other soil, our topsoil, out and put it on the side is because I don't want to move my bottom soil up to the top. I want to keep that topsoil on the top of my hole. So I'm going to thoroughly work this area down here and then I'm going to move my topsoil over when I dig my next trench. Got one more dig here and then we'll be ready 
with our next trench. We can kind of break that up as we go. Now, we've got our subsoil dug and we're leaving our topsoil there. But what we're going to do now is make another trench the same size as the one we had. And while we're digging this, what we're going to do is place that topsoil in our trench just ahead. And this way, we actually keep our topsoil on top, but we can also cultivate the soil underneath. And we'll actually do this process in the entire garden bed. Now, once we've got our soil tilled like this, what we can do is come back in with some organic matter or composted manure. And you can actually put about a three inch layer on the top, till that in, and put another three inch layer on the top and till that in. So you've essentially added a six inch layer of compost, but you want to till that in good to your topsoil. Also, one of the advantages of actually tilling our earth in the fall and adding our compost is that our compost doesn't have to be as well rotted as it does in the spring. We can actually add some unfinished compost because it's going to have all winter to continue composting for us. So we can actually have some sticks and some plant material that's not quite broken down yet in the mix when we do this in the fall. And basically, if we take some time here in the fall, we'll have a very, very nice planting bed and we'll have good success with our perennials or our shrubs in the spring. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.